So this video is for you. If you find yourself wanting to do something and feel like you know you need to do something and you can get caught in this cycle of procrastination where it's like, I know I need to do it, but I'm not really doing the thing. So in this video, I'm going to be talking to why people procrastinate, what stops them from doing the actual thing and how to actually move beyond that. So if you find yourself stuck, if you find yourself wanting to do something and you're not sure how, this video is for you. Welcome everyone, I'm Dean Bentley. I help people build their visions and step into their soul's dream. So on this video, I wanna talk about procrastination because this is one of the things that can limit so many creators, people on this path of healing who have gifts to share to the world and what stops so many from actually living the life they came here to live. And so when I consider procrastination, I consider the last four years of my life and because that's been the time I've been building this business, it's been the time where I've devoted the most resource and the most energy to creating something where now I can live from this place and have a full-time income from my own business. And I said it took me four years. And when I reflect on that now, I can see that if I didn't procrastinate in the way that I did, if I was able to move beyond that, I would have been able to achieve what I've achieved in a lot shorter time. And what I want to dive into in this video is why that is the case and why so many people are still stuck in this cycle of procrastination. And firstly, there is two things that will ultimately create procrastination. And that is firstly, being afraid of failure. And this is where a person is like, oh, I cannot fail because if I do, people will judge me. They will say this, this will mean something about me. And the second one is what most people may not be aware of is fear of success. And I'm gonna to speak to these and then I'm gonna go into some logistics and some other things that can really help us overcome procrastination because there is more layers to this. So firstly, let's go into the fear of failure. What is that about? Why are people afraid to fail? So on a biological level, what people are afraid of on this, if they fail, what they're afraid of if they fail is that they won't get the love that they currently have. If they get seen as a failure, they believe that it might mean people will no longer love them. And this is the thing, this is hardwired into our survival. This is hardwired into our DNA. Think back to tribal days when people would be wandering around, they would be going through the world, they had a tribe. And what would happen if people didn't like you or didn't want you to be a part of your tribe, they would kick you out of that tribe. And this could be rare or whatever it was, but if you were suddenly alone in hunter and gatherer days, that means you had to do everything by yourself. You had to hunt, you had to cook, you had to gather, you had to fend for yourself. And so the removal from tribe would almost mean death. And this is something to consider because our animal bodies haven't transcended this base function. So when people are afraid of failure, what they're actually afraid of is this root fear of death. And this is where we get to have compassion for those parts of ourselves that are still stuck within this timeline where we were an animal. And so, one of the things that has really helped me in this, in my own journey, because I have failed, I have made mistakes, and that was something that in the past I was really afraid of. I was afraid that people would judge me, that ask, who the fuck are you to be doing that? And ultimately that at times kept me small because I was scared that of all of that. I was afraid of the judgment. I was afraid of what others might say and what, I make that mean about me. And this is the key because 
I made that story of failure mean something about me, about the person that is Dean. And this was the biggest spin for me that allowed me to detach from this was actually going beyond that story and realizing, oh, if I fail, that doesn't mean anything about me. It doesn't determine my worth. And this is where the Buddha speaks to non-attachment, non-attachment to outcome, non-attachment in the whole sense, because in a way we can recognize that we are innately worthy. So a lot of people that are afraid of failure, they've attached their level of identity or their worthiness to how they will achieve or the outcome of their project or whatever it is they're working on. So through detaching from that and recognizing if you fail, that it doesn't recognize, it doesn't mean anything about you. It means that then you can step back and be like, oh, I can try this. It's okay if I fail. And for me, I actually had to learn this through embodying this. I had to learn this through making the mistakes and being willing to fail and being willing to be rejected because that was a big part of it for me. I had to be willing to go outside of the tribe, be willing to face death. And there was moments in this where I separated from community, where I was willing to go out and try things on my own that allowed me to see what else was possible. And this is what I recommend when it comes to the fear of failure. If this is one of the things that you're ultimately afraid of that keeps you procrastinating, is actually sitting with this of what would it mean if you failed? Because it's not actually about the failure, it's about what that means to you. And under that, there is a root cause. So ask yourself this question of what does this mean? Are you afraid that people will no longer like you? Are you afraid that you'll be rejected, abandoned, no longer lovable? And actually sit with this because in that there is a part of you that needs healing, that needs attention and love and compassion to recognize it is okay to let go of this base instinct because what it ultimately wants for you is to protect you. It wants to keep you safe. And that's the egoic structure of this. And that's why it is doing that because it wants to keep you safe and it's trying to keep you safe by keeping you in that old identity that says I cannot fail and I'll be safe if I stay where I am. And this segues into the other one, which is the fear of success. Now, you may be like, who, who would actually be afraid of success? It's what most of us have been programmed to want. Like the conditioning of the world is about, oh, I want to succeed. I want more. I want to become more than I am. I want to make the money. I want to have the community. I want to have the house. All of this is conditioned into us to make us drive towards it because we live in a materialistic society that is a big part of capitalism and that's it depending on how you view that that is whatever but most people actually have a fear of success and this stems from the same thing because if what they've determined successful means to them means something different and it often means that there would be a separation from who they've been into something else. Because if people were suddenly to become successful without an identity change, and if you're wondering what that is, you can go check out my podcast, The Weird Way. I did a great episode on that. Is that there's a fear that they would change or they would become someone else. And in this, people would no longer like them. There's this same fear of separation from the tribe. And there's a quote that goes, it's not our darkness that we're actually afraid of, it is our light. And this is what they were speaking to when they spoke of this. Because I know for me, there's been times where I'm like, oh, if I'm too successful, the people around me might not like me. If I'm too successful, if I'm working for myself, if that, maybe I won't have the same problems as the people around me. And so I want to transgress into this. A lot of people have problems and create problems because this is a relatable connection. When we're willing to have a problem, we can keep ourselves there because if someone has a problem of scarcity, 
they will probably be around other people who have that same problem. So this creates a connection point where they can be like, oh, I'm going through the same thing and they can feed that energy. And sometimes this is just the way, but other times it is keeping them in that thing because if they no longer had that problem and their friend came to them and was like, oh, complaining about money, well, now they'd be like, oh, I can't really connect to that. I've, I've gone beyond that. And we know that's not true because we can still feel that. We know what that experience has been like if we've had that. But there can be this innate fear where it's like, oh, I don't know if they will connect to me or they'll judge me for having money now because maybe they don't have that money. And this is where the fear of success can come from is this fear of judgment because especially here in Australia and other cultures around the world, there's something called tall poppy syndrome. Now, this is the idea that if you stand up too high, if you're too tall, if you make too much noise, you get cut, you get cut down. And this will actually cause people to play it safe and play small and just be a little bit shorter, a, bit, a little bit less, so they don't risk setting themselves apart and being seen. And there is a contraction from life in that. So I'll use myself as an example. I'm here creating these videos, sharing these videos. And there's an element where this exposes me to different viewpoints. I share more of myself because I'm sharing this video. Not everyone does that and that's okay. But because I do that, I have the podcast I'm sharing on social medias. What it does, it gives people perceptions of me and it gives them insight into me. So if someone wanted, they could use that as something to attack and different things like that. So we've been taught, especially here, that we've been a convict society, that it's safe to play small and hide and be small. But what this does is actually prevents our light from shining across because what we need more now in this world more than anything is people who are willing to shine, who are willing to share themselves and say, this is who I am. I'm willing to be seen. I'm willing to be shared and allow people to see the light that I am even when they're in the dark. And this is for something that I've really noticed in myself when people are down and depressed, in the past, what I've done is I've, I've dimmed myself. I've wanted to meet them where they're at by contracting my energy, maybe being quieter or maybe being smaller and not taking up as much space. And this comes from a very similar issue of, okay, they're going through something, so I don't want to be too much. And when I've done that, what it's done is, it's contracted me and my energy and put me in the same space as them. And basically I got in the hole with them. But the difference, what I do now is I actually be willing to be too much and I stand in that and be like, oh, I'm having a fantastic day even when someone else is going through it. And I don't do that to make theirs less or like make it about me, but what I do is I want to show them that life can be beautiful and if they want, they can come join me and I'm willing to meet them and I'm willing to help them. But I no longer am willing to jump in the hole with them and be like, oh, I, I'll try and dig you out while I'm in the hole. I realize it's better to throw down a rope and help pull them up. And this is where the fear of success comes from because it's like, oh, oh, people will see me. People will possibly judge me. People will probably have different perspectives and there's a less loss of control when this occurs. So these are the two things which can really affect procrastination is people have a root core of fear of failure and a fear of success. And with the fear of success, ask and be honest with yourself. What would this mean if you were successful? Would that is there any fear of judgment or condemnation by those around you? Is there a fear of having too much money? What would it mean for you to have money? Is there conditions around that would mean greedy? If there are there conditions that mean you're taking too much? Because 
And would that make you a bad person? Because as people, we want to be good people. That is in our nature. And if these conditions are there, it will keep you in that spot. So to help with procrastination, come back to these questions and ask, what would it mean to fail for me? Do I have any judgments around failure? And then ask the same for success. Do I have any fears around success? Do I have any judgments around success? What would that mean for me? And connect to this. And so you can be truthful and honest. And then from here, the other piece which can help and create a lot of procrastination in people is a lack of clarity and a lack of an action plan. Because if we don't know what we're doing or if we don't feel we have the capacity to meet the problem where it's at or have the skills and the capability to learn the skills to overcome the problem in front of us, we can go into overwhelm. And so if we're facing a problem that is further along than what we currently are and we don't have the capacity for it, we will go into a state of overwhelm. So we're able, if we're able to meet a challenge and have the skill level and the capacity to meet it, it will flow. So if you're struggling with procrastination, get real. Do you have the current skills to solve this problem? Do you have the current knowledge? Do you have the skills to learn the knowledge to overcome this problem? Because if not, that is the first place you need to look at how to learn because learning is a skill and learning is a skill that is valuable that will allow you to transcend and upgrade your level so that you can meet these harder challenges. It's like in a video game. If you met a boss and you only had shitty weapons and had no chance of defeating him, you're probably not going to pick up the game and play. But if you go, if you start raiding, if you start up leveling your character and then you come back with some upgraded gear and you have the skills and you're able to have a chance of beating that boss, you actually stick with it and you'll be willing to fight it over and over again knowing that, oh, you actually can get there. And this is the same thing in challenges with our life. If we don't have the skills yet to meet the challenge, we'll often procrastinate and back away because it's like there's no point. We actually want to meet challenges that there's a chance of us succeeding or a chance of us learning how to succeed. So these are my tips around procrastination. Let me know where you're at. What do you procrastinate with? What are your biggest challenges when it comes to procrastination? If you're wanting more info on this and see what else it takes to be a conscious creator, check out my link tree, subscribe to this channel. I'll be posting a lot more on here. Let me know what's landed for you. Let me know if there's any other problems that you go through in this world of conscious creatorship and following your soul's path and bringing that through business. So much love. This is Dean Bentley signing out.